In the second part of chapter one, we will discuss the different types of environmental concern. We'll also look at the di different dimensions of environmental science, as well as sustainability and environmental ethics. Environmental concern is based on a sliding scale. It starts with what we call pragmatic resource conservation. This means that we're using conservation as a means to provide jobs. In 1905, public forests, parks, and wildlife refuges were created. These created jobs for people who, no, who did not have jobs at the current time. So conservation was a means to an end. Soon we realized that we might have a moral or aesthetic obligation to nature preservation. We saw that the organisms had a fundamental right to exist, and we needed to do conservation based on that right, not just because it was a means to an end. This was a biocentric preservation model. Soon, in the 60s, we added a whole new era of environmentalism. Here, we not only looked at the rights of the organisms to exist and creating conservation refuges, but also we wanted to look at the pollution, what we were currently harm, how we were currently harming or possibly uh, causing a detriment to our environment. This was more focused on our health and ecological damage. Currently, we're in an age of global environmental citizenship. This means we're not just focusing on how it's affecting us or how it's affecting a specific species. We're looking at the entire planet. We know that our planet is an interconnected web, and we need to provide conservation for the whole planet, not just for something that's endangered or in need right now. There are also some human dimensions to environmental science. A huge part of environmental science is poverty and supply distribution. We know that a lot of people living in extreme poverty don't have access to certain things, like proper sanitation, clean water, or a good food source. Our goal is to lower our poverty levels, to bring up these uh, needs to provide clean water and enough food, but we also want to maintain a low pollution level that is already occurring in these um, underdeveloped countries. So our solution is to create a sustainable model to provide these resources without causing excess pollution. What exactly is sustainable? Well, sustainable development meets the needs of the people right now, but it doesn't compromise the ability of the future generations to meet their needs too. We're not using up all our resources right now just so that we can live and not worrying about who's going to be living in the future. We also want to improve our quality of life. We want people who are living in extreme poverty to not have to live in those conditions, but we want to make sure that we improve their life in a way that we can carry out and that they continue for multiple generations, not something that's just a quick fix for one generation or one family. Environmental ethics considers what's right and wrong and how we treat our environment. We base these on two different things, an inherent value and an instrumental value. Our inherent value is just the right to exist, the organism's right to exist, its right to have its own space and be there. The instrumental value is how useful something is to us. Usually our ethical decisions are based on one or the other, and sometimes these two values come in contrast with each other. Finally, we find that faith comes into a lot of our environmental decisions. There's a lot of religious traditions that include stewardship and creation care. So sometimes making an environmentally sound decision is merely following your faith or religious traditions. There's also something called environmental justice, and this is the idea of weaving civil rights and environmentalism together. It says that not only those who can afford to live in a healthy, life-giving, and safe environment should, but it should be available to all. So something that is environmentally sound is an inherent right to all people, not something just that you can afford to do. This concludes Chapter 1, Understanding Our Environment. Remember that the practice quiz on page 34, questions 1 through 10, is due Thursday, and your first current event is due Friday. You can hand these in in class or on Enmodo.com.